Hello there, I'm Todd Daniels from Pearson, Manitoba. We're down in the uh, southwest corner of Manitoba. Um, mostly all grassland and um, uh, a few creeks and um, a lot of farmland that was all farmed and now is um, switched over to uh, a lot of cattle country. Um, we personally run 240 cows and uh, um, and we'll probably increase a bit but um, um, we um, we calve in fifteenth uh, of April to May, twentieth of April, I guess, to May, um, on grass. Um, that's been one of the big changes that we've made in the last few years. Um, <clears throat> so with that cycle, uh, we are now um, uh, well, we bale graze all um, all winter and uh, right through till um, until we start calving. Cows come home and then we calve them on on calving pasture that is um, uh, not grazed until um, uh, until the cows come in that uh, in April. Um, we just like to have a, a good uh, regrowth of grass on there for ready for when the cows come home. Um, we've been planting trees for for several years, well since I was started farming I guess we've been planting trees. Um, with uh, a lot of success, but with some not so success, successful um, projects, uh, we've been um, uh, going work through the conservation district and uh, with their guidance and help and uh, their tree planters and and then their uh, guys that come and uh, cultivate the trees to uh, keep them uh, uh, growing and keep the weed control down. Uh, very important. Um, we've been planting trees. I guess we first started. Um, Oh, whenever I had summer fall, I usually would plant a half mile of uh, trees on the end of the field that would help me in later years. Um, like at the, if, if we planted the trees, the row trees on the uh, north end of a, of a field, and then that would eventually down the road would give us protection um, on the south side of the trees. For the cows, um, we used to have a lot of poplars uh, in the area here, a lot of poplar bluffs, but um, with drought and and putting cows, we used to put the cows out on a quarter and they would stay there for the entire year and um, with many, with bigger numbers of cows, the, the uh, trees, the poplar trees just didn't survive and we hardly have any poplar trees left anymore at all. Um, so now um, we uh, rotate and we'll graze and um, you know try not to have the, the uh, cows in the trees any longer than necessary. Um, the trees that we do have left. The trees that I've all planted are um, trees that um, we fence right from day one and a cow never gets into them at all. You got to keep the fence up because you don't, they will, calves will be in there and um, so you got to keep the, um, uh, you got to keep the uh, cows out. Um, uh, l last few years We've planted trees in uh, some slough areas, um, long sloughs that um, uh, hold water for much of the year, and uh, we planted uh, willows and um, and poplar trees that handle the uh, the water, standing water, uh, for longer periods of time, and then uh, fenced them. And uh, I, I, for us, that is a pretty good way to go. Uh, you get your trees down the bottom, and then um, on the uh, you fence it and then on the south side of the uh, the uh, trees uh, we have shelter for raising is um, you, you gotta have um, well there's a few things that kind of just fell into place for me uh, when we started to bale graze um, um, the uh, electric fence we had everything we got electric fence everywhere we tear out our, our old barb and uh, we, we replace it with uh, good electric fence and that is a super tool just allows you to make paddocks, you can make uh, spring paddocks, fall paddocks, um, paddocks for getting your cows in. Uh, once your cows are trained to it, it's super easy. So with the bale grazing, uh, we have our, we don't, I don't bale graze with my calves. I wean my calves in the fall and um, the cows go out. And so I just use the string on a, on a spool and um, electrify it and it just, uh, just got no problems at all with it. It couldn't be simpler. Um, I go out there, well, me or my dad go out there once 
once a day to check the water, but lots of days we, we're not out there. Lots of, we go several days without ever being out there. Um, um, lots of guys go weeks without ever being out there. Um, uh, but with, uh, with electric string, um, you can just control the amount of feed that your cows are getting and, um, and make sure they clean it up the best they can. And um, one of the big uh, things that guys talk about is the, oh, they're wasting feed. Um, like I said, I, I, I budget 40 pounds per day, 30 to 40 pounds per day per cow. And at the end of the, at the, end of the winter, I've fed usually less bales that, than what I would have if I was putting it out there every day. Um, and they're getting the same pounds per acre, or pounds per animal as so. Um, so the electric string and electric fence is very important. You got to have it working in order to keep your cows in, um, so they're not feeding on your whole ration winter rations. Um, the other thing is uh, well, we use a bale picker, and um, I just go out and drop my bales off in rows and. Um, then I spend a half a day with the front end loader organizing it a bit in the fall before I before we start the bale grazing. Uh, I do use a, I had a GPS for my sprayer, so I uh, I put down my tracker with my bale picker, and I would set up two A B lines um, with on grids of 35 feet apart, and that's just kind of on my GPS. It's my implement width. I set it up for 35 feet, and. Um, works super easy. If anybody wants to call me on that, then uh, let me know. They're more than welcome to. Um, the healthy grass on, like, having healthy grass is very important to um, the long-term viability of your operation. Um, the rotational grazing and feeding your cows out on the pastures where they're um, out on your pastures is uh, um, just so important to your grasses. Um, I always like to leave a growth of grass behind as much as possible. Um, when you're after bale graze, and I give it that year off, that first summer off after bale graze, and there is a, a layer of grass out there that you can barely walk through, um, and super good for the environment. It's right full of prairie chickens. All my pastures are full of prairie chickens, deer, mice galore. You know, you can't walk more than on. Um, We've had wet years the last couple of years too, so that that helps a lot too on this prairie. Uh, but mice everywhere, and so the the coyotes and the foxes and the um, and the uh, hawks and the owls, eagles, all benefit from it. The deer um, bed down. We don't, oh, like you can't even you can't see a coyote in our pastures anymore because the the grasses are um, is just that tall. Um, yeah. Um, just very healthy grass is just very important to the environment. Healthy trees are very important to the environment too. They both um, hold a lot of carbon and, um, and grasses, a healthy stand of grass holds uh, a pile of carbon in it. Um, it's, a, it's a storage bank for the environment. Um, yeah, so I guess I would, to finish, I would just like to, to thank you all for listening, and if any of you have any questions at all, uh, feel free to call me. Um, I guess the other thing is, we, uh, my dad has always got a team hooked up. Uh, we used to feed with uh, horses, and we still do um, feed our calves um, with a um, uh, horse-drawn bale handler, um, and if anybody's interested in that, uh, they're more than welcome to call as well. So thank you very much.